Mr. Day, Mr. Day, Mr. Day, oh, daylight come and we won't go home. Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin are two dead people in their home. Winona Ryder, Catherine O'Hara, known pedo named Jeffrey Jones. Move into the house, but they aren't welcome. Daylight come and me won't go home. Michael Keaton, known as Beetlejuice, say his name three times, he'll send you home. But he wants to marry Winona, Winona, Winona Ryder. Despite the fact she was underage, Jeffrey Jones looked and said, me too. Man, he dumbed himself out of Hollywood. Daylight come and me won't go home. Daylight come and me won't go home. I'm Joe Renton with a retro review of Beetlejuice from 1988. Provided that I not piss all over the grave of Harry Belafonte with that terrible goddamn rendition. Let's talk about this movie right before Beetlejuice Beetlejuice comes out. And imagine if they're able to do a third one. Then he's going to be summoned every single time somebody says they want a ticket for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Not going to say it, not going to summon him on this goddamn video. But yes, the cult classic directed by Tim Burton. Not that you could tell because the Tim Burton stylistic stuff was kept to a minimum. And by that I mean it was all over the fucking place. And I mean that with respect. Look, this is one of Tim Burton's most revered movies. People say... <laughs> This is the precursor to Nightmare Before Christmas, except he did not direct Nightmare Before Christmas, and I feel the need to say that there. Though, that being said, he has been trying to make a sequel to this movie for a long goddamn time. So let's talk about the origin of this particular thing, except that would be for interviews. I'm going to talk about the cast, but first I'm going to talk about the writers. Yeah, there were three people that wrote this. <laughs> I think that was where kind of a couple of my issues came with this movie. Look, I hold no huge affection for this movie, but I appreciate it, and I do admire the set pieces, the designs, and the fact that the cast does seemingly, you know, appear to be having a good time. I do remember the animated series that ran for a little bit. I was also very young when that came out. I was seven when this movie came out. I remember seeing it sometime after it got released, sometime on home video. Yes, kids, we used to have to go to a video store and rent something called a VHS tape. And then I do remember actually catching these series, uh, the animated series, that if I tried to go back and watch it now, it'd probably be like the Pink Pick and I saw the TV glow. Probably wouldn't, you know, uh, have aged all that well. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, Michael McDowell, who did Nightmare Before Christmas and also Thinner. Who remembers Thinner? Do you remember Thinner? If you remember fondly, I would really like to know why. So, Larry Wilson, not Larry Nelson, no AWA announcers here. <clears throat> Uh, the Adams Family movie. That stuff I need to retroview at some point. <laughs> and Warren um, <clears throat> S. Kraken, or Kraken. I'm just going to call him Kraken, because that's funnier. Batman and Beverly Hills Cop 2. Unfortunately, he did pass away, like, at age 40 or 44. So, yeah, Alec Baldwin <clears throat> um, plays Adam. Adam Baldwin. <clears throat> Adam Baldwin just sounds like a jobber name on, like, you know late era Jim Crockett Promotions television. And they're coming to get you, Barbara, played by Gina Davis. Or a couple <clears throat> living and, you know, <clears throat> they built a miniature set and they all are really, really <clears throat> revered people. Except there is this one um, <clears throat> woman, Jane Butterfield. Jane, you ignorant suit. Can't actually say the word. Um, Annie McEnroe, not to be confused with John McEnroe because they're entirely different people. And I don't think Annie had nearly the rage issues John McEnroe did. She wants to sell the house. It's too big of a house. This house needs to be, you know, for a family. But they don't have kids. <clears throat> Possibly they drown their kids because they end up drowning in an accident later. And then they realize time passes a lot faster when you're dead. A new family moves in where you do have the daughter, Lydia, played by Winona Ryder, pretty much in her breakout role, I would argue. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe, like, this helps set up for stuff like... Actually, I think Heather's might have come out right around this time. Nevertheless, Winona Ryder actually had a pretty uh, you know, ascending career and then did weird shoplifting stuff and other weird choices. But she's in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and so is Monica Bellucci, who is nowhere near this movie, more in the pity. But she is the gothic, you know, 
morose daughter, emo as it were, who ends up seeing the ghosts <clears throat> and realizes, you know, ghosts aren't all that bad. <clears throat> and Barbara and Adam take a liking to Lydia because they see her as, you know, a really nice kid. But also they end up accidentally summoning a character named Beetlejuice that is spelled entirely differently. And yes, yeah, played by Michael Keaton in, I would say, probably one of his most iconic roles, this and Batman. Um, <clears throat> there might be a couple others, but those are really the two I think that people remember Michael Keaton for. I remember him. He's not dead, but just, you know, keep in their memories when they think about great Michael Keaton movies. I personally think Desperate Measures was a pretty good uh, role for him, too, even if the movie is entirely shit. He, he was fucking committed. <laughs> I apologize, by the way, if I sound a little bit off. Allergies, weather fluctuations, but damn it, I am powering through to give you this review. So it did have a $15 million budget, which, um, you know, in today's money is just about $40 million. $8 million opening, $21.2 million in today's money. $74.6 million gross. That's just under $200 million um, for today's dollars. So it's pretty good. I really don't understand why this movie didn't get a sequel. Maybe because Tim Burton didn't want to work with as much CGI. A lot of practical effects, stop motion stuff and everything. He tried to hold to that with Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice apparently, which has been getting good reviews. It's also been getting some reviews that qualify it as being the typical legacy sequel. It gives you a little bit and that's it. So, yeah, we do get some <clears throat> nice music. We get shake, 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 sonata, da, 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 da. I don't know the rest of the fucking words, and here we go. <clears throat> so, there are some good ghost effects and some crazy things going on. And once things kick in when Michael Keaton really is given a chance to flex his comedic muscles and just have a blast, it really does go well. <clears throat> um, I do want to shout out to character Otho, uh, Glenn Shadix, who unfortunately did pass away. At the age of, he was like 50, in his mid-50s or something like that. He voiced the mayor in Nightmare Before Christmas. <clears throat> um, yeah, read up on Jeffrey Jones, by the way, if you want to know why I'm going to talk about him with uh, some disdain. Piece of shit. Pretty good actor, in all honesty, but piece of goddamn shit. And that the piece of shit nature nullifies anything that he ever did. There are perfectly consenting adults that will do shit. You whatever it's whatever it's not fine but whatever let's move on so the music's by danny elfman a tim burton directed movie with music by danny elfman i for one am floored danny elfman does the music for tim burton's alarm every morning i'm convinced and it has a great soundtrack with so much 80s hair that we're practically drowning in it the miniature sets are really nice that adam ended up designing and of course these house some crazy things like, you know, the grave of Beetlejuice, because Tim Burton, Tim Burton must have had a messed up childhood. So, um, Burton does have a way of bringing a town or a set alive and make, actually making it feel pretty legit. <laughs> he did it with Sleepy Hollow. Even if you could argue that felt like almost a vacuum sealed set, there were also some lively moments and the washed out nature of it was actually pretty good. Um, the damn dog was the one that caused the wreck. Little shit. Shouldn't have gotten any bacon strips for that. They had bacon strips in the late 80s. So, um, the handbook for the recently deceased. This is basically a way for them to, you know, ingratiate themselves with the underworld. And figure out how they're going to be ghosts. Maybe how they can get the, uh, how they can get the Dietzes out of their house. Uh, Winona Ryder's delightful in this, as I noted. <clears throat> um, there was a skeleton key that gave me flashbacks to that terrible goddamn, you know, um, <clears throat> Kate Hudson starring movie. It gave me gas. Um, if you say Beetlejuice, 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 oops, three times, it summons them. It's like Candyman, but um, Beetlejuice is slightly uh, less annoying. Actually, Beetlejuice isn't necessarily annoying. He just wants to get out from being this <clears throat> exorcist-type demon thing and marry a real woman and get out of this prison that he has been trapped in. The creative creatures in the sets really do uh, you know, show a lot of Tim Burton's imagination and make good use of the $15 million budget. 
Uh, Sylvia Sid uh, Sidney being in this was actually kind of funny. Robert Goulet being in this and just remembering him from one of the um, <clears throat> Naked Gun movies. I don't know why that just makes me laugh so much. And also the guy that sang the Canadian National Anthem at WrestleMania Six. No, really. Keep Goulet away with Emerald Nuts. Who remembers those ads? So, uh, Dick Cavett was also in this. That I always thought Dick Cavett died in like the 80s, but because it just seemed like he was around forever. <laughs> and there is, of course, the line that a lot of people remember that a lot of emo people went with. And a lot of, you know, teenagers that do feel angst, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people ignore the uh, stranger than unusual. I myself am stranger than unusual, says uh, Lydia. To be fair, Winona Ryder also is to an extent. And it's kind of weird. <clears throat> you take a look at her here. She's a bright, fresh faced teenager. Then she would go on to do others. She would be doing Heather's. <laughs> she would be doing. I, was she in the piano? She in the piano was the Little Women. One of the two. She was also in Girl Interrupted. She's been in good stuff. She's been in bad stuff every actor has. And, yep, three times, and he appears. And they are on the set, you know, the little miniature set. They have to dig up Beetlejuice. <clears throat> and he he's seen The Exorcist 167 times. All this he has a, you know, great just a series of exchanges with Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin. And he finds The Exorcist funny. I do, too. I don't really find it scary. The head spinning. <clears throat> huh, don't you hate it when that happens? And there are also sandworms that can take people that can basically trap people and take them back to the underworld if they escape, I, I guess. They just pop up out of goddamn nowhere. So we get dinner time, we get the day day o thing. That's probably the scene that the the people most remember fondly. And it's hilarious. <clears throat> Catherine O'Hara was having a blast in this. Jeffrey Jones, I really don't want to know what the fuck he was thinking. But <clears throat> Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. I knew women that could take all that and not even flinch. But nevertheless, with the peels, I knew a lot of weird women in my life. Moving on from that, um, I will not be taking further questions. <clears throat> it's not an all-time great as far as a cohesive narrative, but it has a breezy nature about it. It has its charm. <clears throat> The impressive sets and designs, again, really do kick this whole thing in. And he likes Lydia, which is kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of wrong. I mean, whatever. Yeah. The ghost with the most, <clears throat> that's what they called him. That's actually something that they, turn, that they, you know, carried into the animated show. And, <clears throat> you know, Gina Davis uh, and Alec Baldwin sense that you know, Lydia's not doing all that well, and uh, you know, being dead doesn't make things easier because Lydia's tired of her family. Because Catherine O'Hara's uh, Delia is basically um, she's an art person, but kind of ritzy titsy. Jeffrey Jones as well, Jeffrey fucking Jones. They decide they're gonna market and cash in on all this ghost stuff. But the ghosts don't want to play ball. They really just want them out of the goddamn house. <clears throat> Which, I mean, I get it if you could haunt people and do this. And there was some creative stuff where Alec Baldwin stretched out his face and pulled his eyes out and had eyes on his fingers and stuff like that. <clears throat> that's that's a way to see what your hands can do. Put your hands where my eyes can see. See, that's where Buster Rhymes got the idea from. I assume. I don't really know. But Gina Davis also <clears throat> does some crazy... Again, tremendous makeup effects and impressive visual effects. And the idea is <clears throat> there's a seance, they're being, you know, kind of rotted away and everything because they don't want to play ball, I, I guess. She summoned Beetlejuice only in an agreement to become his wife. Again, underage, but Jeffrey uh, Jones is like, yeah, I can. I could do that. What a fucking creep. Anyway, it's like that's a fucking creep. <laughs> so, they're going to have the wedding. Um, Adam and Barbara try to stop it. <clears throat> and eventually they are able to um they're able to get Beetlejuice, you know, weakened enough or just to the point where they're like, shit, we need to end the sandworm. Come in. <laughs> Takes him back down to the goddamn underworld. And that's it. And then we go to the Mrs. Uh, Shan School for Young Girls or Miss Shan School for Young Girls. <clears throat> and it's established in 1890. Maybe we'll get a reflect maybe we'll get, you know, how that happened. 
back in or in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Maybe we do a Beetlejuice prequel. I could see them actually going that route. Tim Burton doesn't have all the years left on this earth. And things are fine. Basically, there there's co-parents, <clears throat> Jeffrey Jones, uh, Catherine O'Hara, and then Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis as ghost parents. And then Shake, 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 Shake Sonora takes us off. And also there was a football team sight gag earlier. It was pretty funny. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. It's uh, you know, it's a fun movie. It's got its great moments. It's not overall <clears throat> Tim Burton's best, but it's one of his. It's definitely one of his most creative. So nevertheless, let me. It, it, it waffles between a B plus and an A minus, especially for the sets and stuff. If you really want to know my grade on. Also, thanks for checking out my letterbox because I do written stuff, and I'll be doing more written stuff there because I'm gonna say here at the end, guys, <clears throat> for anybody still watching. I have done this channel for a while, and I will continue to do this channel, but if I have a time where I'm going to <coughs> reduce or just stop, I'm still going to be doing written stuff, because I'm in my mid-40s, and sometimes it gets tiring. But it's fun to reflect on movies like this. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ricklin. I'll see you soon.